Ms. Les Rogers, welcome to the Paris Council of Discussion. No closing of the concessions, please. So the time is now. This is the time we call the Division 4. So these seem to be the two numbers in the series of the number of items of these places that are ready.
Thank you very much. Please be seated. The fire starts alone, and the show of people's attention. Perhaps also the man again as the name. Deputy Vice Chancellor of Management Services, Professor Pierre Sudin. Deputy Vice Chancellor of Research, Technology and Innovation, Professor Mikhail Omai Kapu Hari. The University Registrar, Dr. Fernando Lohan, then will be represented by the Deputy Registrar Senate. Mr. Salam Adams, the University Librarian, Professor Abuhar Alai Waji Isa, the Provost College of Health Sciences, Professor Alai Waji Adedoy. The inaugural lecturer of today, Professor Adedo Omolola Ndurumu.
prayer family in, in the CLA, in the local government area of the state. I want to applause for that. You don't see a Christian every day, the Lord is standing before you. <laughs> he attended Pan Carmen Primary School Lagos from 1966 to 1971, and later proceeded to St. Bernard Dines Girls Grammar School of York from 1972 to 1978. He was admitted to study English language in the University of Illinois and graduated in 1981. Professor Idowu had a national youth service from 1981 to 1982 in Oku State Ministry of Education. He obtained a master's degree in library and information science from the University of Pittsburgh, USA, in 1984. <laughs> the degree is coming. And later got a PhD in library and information science in 1998 from the University of Nevada. He started a professional career at the University of Illinois in 1985 and rose through the ranks to become a deputy university librarian in 2005. He was appointed university librarian of the Lagos State University in 2006 and served for two consecutive terms of eight years. Professor Adeto Onola returned to the University of Illinois and was appointed as acting head of the Department of Library and Information Science from August 2016 to July 2018. <laughs> Professor Adeto is an external examiner to postgraduate schools in several Nigerian universities. Professor Adeto served as consultant to the Department for International Development, BFID of United Kingdom, on tax records management and assessment solution for the Lagos State Government. Professor Adetun Omaran Lowu belongs to many professional associations and has several publications in our field of specialization. He is often married with lovely children and grandchildren.
1987, Ito 1994A, Ito 1998B, Ito 1998C, Ito Wu Amma Bang 1999, Ito Wu 1999B, Ito Wu 1999A, Ito Wu 2000D, Ito Wu 2001C, Ma Bang Wu Ito Wu Ano Du Wale 2010, Ito Wu Adibu Adainan 2010, Ito Wu Ano Du Wale 2011, Ito Wu Esere Ano Du Soya 2017, Ito Wu Esere Uru Na and Ajiboye 2017. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Can you grant me the indulgence to give an account of some of these research efforts on ITICT, computerization, automation, application, and stroke adaptation of modern technologies in academic library settings and academic faculties in general? Some of these research efforts have been outlined because time and space constraints will not allow me to present all the results from these papers. A, computerization and automation of library services and procedure, University of Illori as a case study. Between 1985 and 2000, for example, University of Illori made frantic efforts towards automation of certain library routines, routine procedures starting with the technical services section. At this time, cataloging of books, journals, and other resources were becoming too cumbersome to handle. The need to record access points to materials acquired for the library became a big problem, and the retrieval of these resources needed to be automated. The University Computer Center at that time tried his best to assist the library, but the efforts put in did not match the challenges. The adoption of a ready-made software for the University Librarian of the Library Automation Project was then pro proposed. In view of this development, Idowu 2000D investigated available software packages in the market that could hasten the automation processes in Nigerian university libraries. The TeamLib software, also known as Information Manager, was thus recommended for adoption by the University of Illinois Library. The frenzy of automation making waves amongst academic libraries in Nigeria was reported and the University of Illinois Library too joined the League of Early Innovation Adopters as espoused under the diffusion of innovation theory of Everett Rogers, 1931 to 2004. As in a similar development, Idowu 1998C investigated the problems in the library environment and the inhibitors to successful implementation of computerized systems. These were inadequate training of staff, inadequate funding, poor maintenance of equipment, inadequate manpower, infrastructural deficits, shortage of spare parts, and policy issues. It is instructive to note that inadequate funding and inadequate manpower were rated as the most severe in the meters. As of 2019, many of these problems were still visited Goal in many libraries in Nigeria. However, some of the inhibitors have been addressed and the situation is getting better. Funding, for example, improved tremendously, especially with the input of tertiary education trust for TED Fund. It is heartwarming to observe and report that most public tertiary institutions, through the intervening assistance of TED Fund, are now in a much better state. Figure 3 shows an e-library consisting of 100 computers that I set up when I was the university librarian in Lasso. <laughs> Human factor issues and attitude towards ICT usage in libraries. Dovetailing from an earlier study in which inadequate manpower and funding were identified as inhibitors to library automation. A different study examined the variables of gender and age 
as factors affecting computer usage and attitude of librarians towards usage, Ito 1998B. The results indicated that gender and age did not influence attitudes of librarians towards the use of computers, but computerization processes were still a challenge. In a, re in a related research, Ito 1999A examined the relationships among training, experience, current knowledge of computer usage, and attitudes of librarians towards computer usage. The results revealed that there were significant relationships between the identified variables and librarians' attitudes towards computers. This showed that previous training experiences and present usage at work positively influenced attitudes towards the use of computers. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I'm pleased to inform you that the Department of Library and Information Science of this great university and some departments, faculties, schools in the University of Illinois are all ICT compliant. C. Internet fraud and student behavior involvement. Internet fraud is one of the most rapidly increasing form of cybercrime. In fact, it is fast becoming an industry in Nigeria. See figure four on the screen. Idowu Esere and Duro Soya, 2017, examined the factors responsible for student involvement in internet fraud as expressed by students of tertiary institutions in Ilori Metropolis. The findings of the study revealed that the major factors responsible for student involvement in internet fraud included inadequate employment opportunities after school, peer pressure, economic challenges, moral decadence, unlimited access and availability of internet facilities, gender, place of residence, and family type played no significant role. D, economics of computer usage. Certain health problems are usually expressed by operators of video display terminals, VDTs, from frequent interaction with the computer. These problems include dermatitis, musculoskeletal problems, straight eye problems, radiation emission, ETC. For effective management of library staff and productivity, adequate attention must be paid to all these issues. Idowu 1994A addressed all these issues and made the following suggestions. All work environments should conform with the state-of-the-art economic design. Agencies, institutions, and units in Nigeria should try as much as possible to adopt the safety standards set by the European National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health. All computer seats should have adjustable seat height as well as convenient backrest. Illumination around the workstation should be in the range of 500 and 700 knots when reading from the screen. Low light levels in the range of 300 to 500 knots is recommended. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, my second area of research is on the needs and the versatility of librarians, of librarianship. Under this section, I will highlight the needs of three groups of students the law students, the hearing impaired, and the visually impaired students. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, the history of this great university will not be complete without the modest contributions of today's inaugural lecture the first librarian of this great university, who worked for 20 years, 1985 to 2005, tirelessly to ensure that the faculty of law library stood on a strong foundation. So consequently, researches were carried out on students' needs and challenges. Needs of law students. In the 2002B, investigated the academic needs of undergraduate law students of the University of Illinois. The results show that the students only sought information mainly to pass their examinations. They depended on the handouts freely given to them by their lecturers. Only of them used the library or read their personal textbooks. It was found that the greatest inhibitor to using the library by non-library users was the, was the heat experienced during the dry season. Based on the findings, 
it was suggested that the library space should be fully air conditioned and show be well stocked to encourage a good reading culture among the law students. This research. The Vice Chancellor, sir. Deputy Vice Chancellors, Academic, Management Sciences and Research, Technology and Innovation, the Registrar, the University Bursar, the University Librarian, the Provost College of Health Sciences, Dean of Communication and Information Sciences, Deans of other faculties, Postgraduate School and Student Affairs, Professors and other members of Senate, Chairman and members of the Governing Council, directors of various units, heads Department of Library and Information Science, heads of other departments and units, academic, technical, and non-technical staff of the University of Illinois, respected colleagues in Library and Information Science, my Lord, spiritual and temporal, distinguished invited guests, friends of the university, members of my nuclear and extended families, gentlemen of the print and electronic media, great students of the University of Illinois, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I give glory, honor, and adoration to the Almighty God, who has seen me thus far in the journey of life, and who has blessed me with good health to stand before you today to deliver this inaugural lecture in the Department of Library and Information Science, this being the second of such of this great university. My journey as a professional librarian, both as a practitioner and an academic, has been rather tortuous but exciting. My sojourn in librarianship started after I participated in the National Youth Service Course Scheme in Abe Okuta, Ogo State, during the 1981-82 service year. I was posted to the State Ministry of Education as the place of my primary assignment. It was during the NYSC that I started thinking seriously of what career path to tread. Two professional areas caught my attention, early childhood education and library science. My interaction with highly experienced and knowledgeable individuals, particularly with my late, late stepmother, Honorable Justice Adwala Ubutoye, OFR, directed my interest to library science. Quickly, I applied to the prestigious University of Pittsburgh School of Library and Information Science, one of the top 10 universities in the USA, and was fortunate to be admitted in 1982. I completed the master's degree program in 1984, and I returned home thereafter. I was employed by the University of Illinois in 1985 as the first law librarian. To understand the jargons and language of lecturers in the Faculty of Law and to enhance my performance as a law librarian, I had to privately undergo a diploma program in law in 1991 at the Guara State Polytechnic. This actually endeared me to the lecturers in the faculty, many of whom have remained my close friends. This afternoon, if I say quit, quit, plant at all, my colleagues in the Faculty of Law will say solo, solo, sedi. I worked in almost all the sections of the university library, namely technical services, reader services, branch libraries, and the law and the librarian's office. I rose through the ranks from Librarian 2 in 1985 to become a Deputy University Librarian in 2002. Between 2006 and 2014, I served as the first female University Librarian at the Lagos State University. At the completion of my second term in 2014, when I thought I would be resting, Mother Love smiled on me and with persuasion from my senior colleagues, 
I moved to teaching. And I was first appointed as reader in library and information science in the newly created Faculty of Communication and Information Sciences of this great university. And then as room professor in 2017. Whether in practice as a librarian or in, or in teaching as a professor, Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I have paid my dues in librarianship. To the glory of the Almighty God, I've been privileged to experience the two worlds of librarianship, and I've been blessed by the Almighty God to reach the pinnacles of both as a university librarian at the Lagos State University and as a professor of library and information of the University of Illinois, my alma mater. For this feat, I count myself highly favored by the Almighty, Almighty God, who orders the affairs and steps of man in a very troubled and unpredictable world. I can comfortably, comfortably claim that my professional journey in life has happened miraculously, in that I was lucky to be at the right place at the right time and was lifted up by the right people many of whom are present here today in this auditorium. To God be the glory. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, an inaugural lecture provides a golden opportunity for a professor to give an account of what he or she has contributed to the pool of knowledge, locally, nationally, and internationally, in his or her chosen area of specialization. I therefore wish to thank you, sir, and indeed the whole university for giving me this privilege and honor to present the 200th inaugural lecture of this great university. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I stand before this August gathering to share my experiences with you all and to present my modest contributions to knowledge in my area of specialization. I wish to state with all humility that it was not an easy task for me to settle for the title of today's inaugural lecture. I kept thinking, how easy would it be for me to put together all my experiences and research efforts as a practicing academic to convey my contribution to knowledge in the last 35 years? It appeared a tough task for me. However, with some wisdom and great insight, I was able to settle for the converging areas of practice and teaching in library and information science, which inevitably metamorphosed into the topic of today's lecture. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, librarianship is a unique area of study as well as a profession. In practice, it involves teaching, conduct of research, writing of policy papers, rendering valuable services to staff, students, and other clientele using library resources, publishing research outcomes or output in recognized outlets, and participating in conferences, seminars, and workshops to cross-fertilize ideas and findings with professional colleagues. Library professionals also try to solve arising to solve problems arising from challenges and puzzles created by human interactions. In practice and in teaching, I have encountered several problems and challenges, and I have taken and I have actively taken part in finding solutions to such. An outline of my research efforts has been grouped under the following five headings. One, information communication technologies and their applications to the library. Two, students' needs and the versatility of librarianship. Three, library management and administration, research and personal experiences. Four, library education and curriculum development. And five, meeting the needs of the community, town versus gown through library services. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, 
I seek your indulgence to digress a little bit by giving an overview of the discipline of library and information science. The attempt is to enable this august gathering to understand the basic concepts involved in this vital area of science. What is library science? Library science is an interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary field that applies the practices, perspectives, and tools of management, information technology, education, and other areas to the functioning of libraries. It is a field of study that teaches the collection, organization, preservation, and dissemination of information resources. What is information science then? Historically, information science is associated with computer science, psychology, technology, and intelligence agencies. Among the disciplines brought together in the amalgam called information science are computer science, cognitive science, psychology, mathematics, logic, information theory, electronics, communications, linguistics, economics, classification science, system science, library science, and management science. All these as presented in figure one on the screen. Modeling three of theories in the field of library archival and information science. These are the acceptance of technologies include but are not limited to the following. Technology acceptance model, term one, two, three. Theory of reason, action. Theory of plan, the effort was brought to the attention of the then dean of law, Professor Nancy Abdurazak, who was the first dean of the faculty of law. The law library was then promptly air conditioned and more resources, comprising law journals, books and law reports, were added to the collection. In effect, the problems identified in the study were promptly attended to. The services were improved and the law library became a place of pride amongst its contemporaries in the university community. So much so that students from other faculties started trooping to the law library to enjoy the conducive environment. Figures five and six show the beautiful law library in our law faculty. B, that's procuring the peer students' needs. In the course of my study as a law librarian, to reference librarian, in the 1991-92 session, I came across the first set of students who were then procuring the peer. This was the first, this was the first group of students to be integrated into the mainstream of academic acti activities and studentship at the University of Illinois. There were nine students made up of eight males and one female. Thus, in the 1994B, in our presentation, advocated for individualized specialized services that will enhance the educational pursuits of students with special needs within the university library. It is noteworthy to mention that individualized and personalized specialized services, including tutorial and sign interpretation, are now being provided for this special population of students in the university. Needs of visualists in peer students. Idowu Okonko and SMA 2017, research into bibliotherapy as a strategy for motivating visually in peer students towards achieving academic excellence. It is known that visual impairment does not lead to intellectual retardation or total incapacitation. Developmental bibliotherapy as different from clinical bibliotherapy is sharing literature with readers to assist them in managing their personal problems. This is achieved through biography, autobiography, history, and fictional stories. It consists of selecting reading materials relevant to the student's situation and allowing the student to identify with the character in the book who is experiencing a problem similar to his or her own. Through this process, the student begins to see how the character in the book resolves a confronting problem, thus recognizing possible solutions to his or her own problems. The story of Adam Spader, a blind American author, 
political activists and lecturer who was the first airline person to earn a Bachelor of Arts degree is a good example. D. Using communication and counseling skills to meet students' needs in the library. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, you may wonder what business this inaugural lecturer has to do with communication and counseling. I wish to profile and emphasize that the librarianship is an interdisciplinary subject. As mentioned earlier in this lecture, library and information science attempts to bring together concepts and methods from various disciplines, psychology inclusive. Experience and research have shown that personal and information needs of library patrons can be readily met through communication and in-depth understanding of what transpires within or between in Doru, 1987. My third area of research, sir, is on library management and the administration of libraries, research and some personal experiences. Management of libraries and information centers, LIS 307, is a compulsory course that is offered in most local and foreign library schools. The area of convergence lies in the skills to acquire when managing a library or practicing as a librarian. Issues to be considered in library management usually include staffing, budgeting, reporting, evaluation, delegation of authority, powers and responsibilities, discipline, motivation and training of staff, etc. However, in the personal and research experiences, of this inaugural lecturer, the following issues are worth noting. One, staffing in the library. ISA and Indobu 2016, the same ISA, the university librarian, investigated the staffing situation in academic libraries and its implications for librarianship practice in Nigeria. The findings revealed that staffing Staffing situations in the libraries were grossly inadequate. It was surprising to discover that a top line, bottom heavy pyramidal staffing structure was found in one of the libraries. It was recommended, amongst others, that library management should continue to encourage the university administration to employ more able library staff, especially highly qualified senior ones. B, managing stress in the library. My librarianship is a helping profession. If care is not taken, one can easily be looking at the library user's problems while neglecting the welfare of staff working in the library. Idowu, SRA, and Fako Kunde 2017 in a research entitled Occupational Stress Among Librarians in Nigeria, the moderating role of self-instructional talk was conducted. The need to highlight the moderating role of self instructional talk in managing occupational stress among librarians in Nigeria cannot be overemphasized. One of the counseling interventions for the management of occupational self stress is the self instructional talk, also known as self talk, positive self talk, thought therapy, cognitive stress management, or mind talk. Thus, library management managers need to be more sensitive to the personal needs of their staff so as to improve their mental health, which invariably leads to greater, greater uh, productivity. Still under administration of libraries is the theft of law or loss of valuable resources in the library. Preservation and conservation of library materials, LIS 412, is a vital cause taught to all library trainees in universities. In the course, the issues of depletion of library resources through theft is usually highlighted and emphasized. This unacceptable antisocial behavior is a matter of great concern to libraries in general and librarians in particular. While working as a law librarian, I documented my experiences in the library in Dobu 2001B, where cases of theft of voluminous law reports were reported. How can this malpractices be stopped or minimized. The use of modern electronic theft prevention gadgets, such as CCTV camera, 
electronic gates, stamping or engraving library assets, posting of competent and other security staff, ETC, will go a long way in reducing the incidence of theft in the library. Personal experiences in the management of academic libraries. Having worked as an, as an academic librarian for 29 years, 1985 to 2014, I've, I have gathered a lot of experiences in the day-to-day -day running and management of libraries. Now, as a classroom teacher, these experiences have been infused into the theoretical outlay of most of the courses I teach. For example, I presently teach the course Academic Libraries, LIS 8, 817, to master's degree students. The outline of the course run thus as presented on the screen. In the administration and management of Academic Libraries, experience has shown that a university librarian must adopt a mixture of style of management, authoritative, permissive, laser fear, bureaucratic, to be successful. No single style will suffice. On user education, specifically for GNS 101, Idowu 2005 documented this in a study of overcoming anxiety in library use amongst undergraduate students in Nigeria. Studies show that those who come in contact with librarians during the orientation course are more often friendly with library staff and consequently make optimal use of available library resources. Also, it was suggested that more interesting topics should be introduced to the library components of GNS 101, such as creation through design of online public access catalog, use of internet for research, and multimedia interactive sessions in various disciplines on international associations. All librarians should be members of at least one international association. I am a committed member of the American Library Association and have benefited immensely from the activities of ALA at a personal and institutional level. In the past, my other foundation used to support only for university libraries in Nigeria with our databases. However, I made a case at the Anaheim California Conference in 2010 that since all universities conduct research and produce human resources, journals and other databases, sponsorship by MacArthur Foundation should cover all university staff without any discrimination. It is gratifying to report that three months after the conference in USA, all Nigerian universities were put on open access initiative from the sponsor resources of this global foundation. On advocating and lobbying for libraries, it is heartwarming to know that librarians are no longer seen as the quiet, pedantic, and introverted people that they used to be following other class of books. Today, the story of librarians has changed as they are now seen as a visionary, up to date, and highly focused professionals. The advocacy group of the ALA, of which this lecturer is a member, has taught members in Nigeria to be vocal and to vote on all matters related to the development and welfare of the library, and in India they find themselves. That is the lecturer in figure eight in front of the capital, capital hill. Think as a rally to this effect, a rally to this effect was held in Washington, D.C. in June 2010 to solicit the support of the U.S. Congress to always support and increase funding for the library. Similar advocacy and sensitization efforts and campaigns for libraries public, academic, and school should be mounted in developing countries including Nigeria, especially at this time when school libraries are few or non-existent in some states of the Federation. I form area of research. Mr. Rasha Selosa, meeting the needs of the university school library services, town and gown relationship. The university does not operate in isolation. 
There are towns, communities, and people in and around it. The concept of town and gown relationship has been aptly exhibited by our university, the University of Ilorin. Only recently, the Institute of Education, in collaboration with the Department of Adult and Primary Education and the Kuala State Mass Education Agency, concluded, concluded plans to award certificates to adult learners within and around its borders in various programs. I am a passionate, passionate supporter of this initiative as buttressed by my past researches conducted on town and gown relationship thus. A, providing library services to rural, rural women. The Association of Women Librarians in Nigeria was founded in March 1991. The main objectives of the association, among others, are to make significant and considerable contributions to the mass literacy campaign, to improve the lot of women by educated, ed educating them with the ultimate goals of enhancing their status socially, economically, and politically. Idowu 2000 C proposed an education model for women librarians in the provision of library services to rural women. It was recommended that visits, discussions, advice, audiovisual presentations, and enlightenment programs be part of the strategies for educating the rural women around the university community. B, the library as a self-learning center. The active role of library in adult, in adult education and self-learning is vital. Those outside the formal school system have always depended on various organizations and adult education programs for their education. One of such organizations is the library, which has it had to play a significant role in Nigeria. Idowu 1998 discussed the model of self-learning in the library. Library facilities and resources that can be provided for self-learners in the library include one, room for lectures, mini, mini technical workshops, digital audiovisual, electronic and printed materials appropriate for self-learners and specifically tailored to their needs and for advisory, referral and counseling services. The role of the library henceforth should be that of a self-learning center, a career information center and a vocational guidance center. C, the library and girl child education. Vice Chancellor, sir, I am an advocate of girl child empowerment and women emancipation. Idowu 2008 highlighted the importance of relevance of girl child education to the society. The researcher examined the impediments to education by the girl, girl child and preferred solutions. The Association of Women Librarians in Nigeria is primarily focused on the female gender. An educated woman is an immeasurable asset, not just to our immediate or extended family, but the whole society at large. Educating girls is one of the wisest investments of any society. Although principles of equal educational opportunities are upheld in Nigeria, there are sometimes, these are sometimes undermined by certain socio-cultural beliefs and stereotypes, like preference for the male child, a woman's child is in the kitchen and the other room, female inheritance forbidden, data collected from the ETC. Data collected from the field across the nation has shown the following impediments to girl-child education, poverty, distance to cover to, cover to get to school, school-related factors, and hours to be spent at school. Solutions to the preferred to this impediment included. One, adequate preparation from home. The birth of a girl child should be celebrated. A bouncing baby girl must be welcomed. It is not only a baby boy that bounces at birth. A girl, a girl is both beautiful and bouncing at birth. Confidence and approval from home will surely boost our image and self-acceptance. Two, low-cost and flexible timetable must be put in place to encourage the young child to go to school and also assist with domestic chores if need be. This is especially recommended for children who live in rural areas. 
Three, since many parents worry about distance, schools should be located close to communities and homes. More female teachers should be recruited to protect female students from defilement or harassment of any sort. Four, employment, the library's role should include A, employment of teacher librarians in schools from the nursery stroke kindergarten to the primary and secondary levels and B, provision of a well-stocked library in each school. Five, gender stereotypes should be avoided in schools curriculum. For instance, in Afghanistan, Female children are excluded from aviation, land survey, and economics courses. Even though in Nigeria, stereotyping is fast disappearing, some parents to teachers still believe subjects like home economics, typing, and needlework are solely for female students, while science and technology courses are for the males. Figure 9 has projected the kids and the searching advocates for knowledge in the doing our homework under the ATM terminal lights in Urugu, while Figure 10 shows a mother taking a, her daughter to school on a bicycle, a determination to empower a girl child. Mr. Mike can say this, sir. My fifth and my last area of studies is on library education, curriculum development, and user education. A. Proliferation of library schools in Nigeria. Issa, Idoru, Harande, and Igwe 2016. Painstakingly examined the effects of library school flow proliferation in Nigerian universities on quality education delivery. Total elimination of 20 universities revealed that the proliferation was perceived as contributing to the development of the profession, though with attendance challenges, which include inadequate provision of refugee facilities and resources, inadequate staff number, staff needs, and high enrollment of students. Instructional textbooks for teaching. I have contributed to two instructional textbooks for teaching use of library courses in Nigerian universities. Idowu 2005C, Idowu 2006B. I have also contributed to the Library and Information Science Curriculum Development. The adopted course description at the Lagos State University is similar to that of the University of Milone. This suggestion, it was suggested that digital related courses and more ICT based courses should be introduced to the curriculum. Computer accessibility using your lecturers and lecturers' perception of ICT-based assessment in Nigerian universities. The use of ICT in assessment is a relatively new in Nigerian universities and is fraught with many challenges. See Idogu, Esere, and Yorulo 2017. The results of this study show that almost all the lecturers, 98.0%, had access to computers. On the non-end can use a variable, many of the lecturers especially those in the upper cadre, did not have adequate literacy level in the use of computers. Thus, it was recommended that continuous continue in-service ICT training be made available to lecturers, especially with regard to innovative ICT-based assessment for optimal usage and wide acceptance. Finally, Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, my service to the community. When I assumed duty as the first line librarian of this great citadel of Benin, I requested for work in the library under the leadership of Mr. B. A. Oloris of Pleasant Memory, the first university librarian of this great university. I started the law library from scratch in 1985 with virtually nothing on ground. And for almost two decades, 
the library was nurtured into one of the best law libraries within Nigerian universities. In fact, it was my commitment to work that earned me a sabbatical placement at the Lagos State University, where I was the Deputy University Librarian DUM Law Library Stroke Reader Services before becoming the University Librarian later. A book entitled Landmark of Excellence, University of Illinois at 25, is a masterpiece worthy of a prime place in any collection of staff of a library. I was privileged to be one of the editors of the book while Professor Olobafemi was the chairman of the editorial board. I remember with nostalgia how we interviewed officers of the university then, both retired and presently serving, and the doggedness that went into getting their voices and echoes. The book is projected on the screen, figure 10. In the year 2005, I was a consultant to the Department of International Development, DFIU, UK, under the state and local government program to fashion out the automation and management of tax, re tax records in Lagos State. As a result of the groundwork of the team, today, Lagos State is about the only state in Nigeria with an automated tax processing and licensing initiative. In year 2001, Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I was a resource person to the Federal Government on Universal Basic Education, UPEP Education Program, UPEP Abuja, on management and use of classroom materials, the Train the Trainer Program. It took me to Enugu in Enugu State, Makodi in Benue State, and Abuja FCT, where I taught teachers all over the country on the organization of reading materials for school libraries. Other numerous services to the community included, but not limited, to the following. Member, Committee of All Masters and Mistresses, 1998 to 2000. Matron, Deputy Chamber, Faculty of Law, University of Illinois, 1999 to 2006. Advisor, Christian Law Students Fellowship of Nigeria, Class 4, 1997 to 2005. Initiators to sponsor, buy them books and pay of the Department of Library and Information Science, Uni Learning 2017. Conclusion. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, the convergence of practice and teaching in library and information science has been addressed by me as typified in my career. I have drawn extensively from my practice, starting from Liberia 2 to Deputy University Liberia at the University of Illinois, and ending in my peak as the University Librarian of Lagos State University. On the other hand, I rose from the position of an associate professor to professor in the Department of Library and Information Science, University of Illinois, to reach the peak of my academic career. My studies through researches, publications, and personal experiences in my 35 years of studies in the two universities have addressed issues bordering on application of ICT to the library environment to improve services and motivate staff for enhanced job performance. I strove in my lectures and training sessions to sensitize and prepare librarians in training to appreciate the challenges associated with the profession of librarianship in Nigeria and the way forward. The proliferation of library schools in Nigerian universities has led to an attendant overproduction of librarians who remain jobless after several years of graduation. Thus, concerted efforts have to be made to provide resources and innovation centers where the skills of these librarians can be put to good use. Unfortunately, reading culture is gradually facing out and the delight, especially among the good, is is social and the delight, especially among the youth, is the social media. Is the library still relevant as a resource to our educational system? Unless this matter is adequately and appropriately dealt with, there is the danger that Nigeria will for a long time continue to make be a nation of unrealized hopes and unfulfilled promises. Though of this inaugural lecturer prayers and wishes that this will not be our portion. Before we all begin to say amen to this prayer, educators, especially librarians, are challenged to be up-to-date, committed, 
visionary and resourceful in their duties. My recommendations. Based on the totality of my past researches and varied experiences as a professional librarian in university management and a senior academic professor, the following recommendations are hereby made. All academic libraries in Nigeria should be fully automated. This is the current trend in the discipline. Two, all academic library facilities and resources, including those in new buildings, should be equipped with architect gadgets to reduce loss of expensive and scarce equipment and resources acquired by the library. Three, academic libraries must be flexible enough to tolerate and accommodate the yearnings, needs, and nuances of Generation X, Y, Z. These are the younger generation of users who are technology savvy, savvy and want to study and conduct research under conducive and sophisticated stored electronically controlled environments that are comparable to what exists in developed countries of the world. Such clients want to eat, drink, and talk and discuss among themselves in the library. It is recommended that spaces for rooms be created in all new library buildings to allow for this innovative flexibility. Four, only candidates who are interested in library and information science should be admitted into library schools of Nigerian universities. This is to encourage and train only those who have passion for the profession. Five, all ministry and parastatal, federal, state, and local governments, as well as agencies, national and international, must be encouraged to establish in-house library and documentation units to cater for the record management of their information resources. With this in place, library and information science graduates would have career placements in all these establishments. Six, primary and secondary schools should not be registered by the ministries of education. If the schools do not have functional libraries and trained librarians on their staff list, in Lagos State, for example, there are 1,016 public primary schools. The number of private primary schools therein would likely to be doubled. For secondary schools, the number may be less or the same. This means that an equivalent number of librarians could be employed in all primary and secondary schools in the state. Considering dreams for all schools in Nigeria, both primary and secondary, quite a huge number of library and information science graduates could then be employed to provide effective library service to our citizen youth. Seven, entrepreneurship in information. LIS 402 is a compulsory course, yearly taught by this inaugural lecturer since 2014. Students and graduates of data and information science are trained to think outside the box and embrace the numerous entrepreneurial skills that are exposed, that they are exposed to. Eight, their child education should continue to be encouraged and adequately funded by government, federal, state, and local, and other stakeholders. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, on this note, I wish to endow a prize in perpetuity for the best female graduate students in library and information science. This is to encourage female students to compete for this prize, thus leading to better academic achievement to produce sound library and information science professionals. I have written an official letter in respect of this to the appropriate organ of the university in charge of this noble course. Thank you, sir. <laughs> On internet fraud, employment opportunities in ICT usage should be created for a large population of employed library and information science graduates so that they can fully utilize their skills in profitable ventures. 10. Students' needs in the library and in university generally should continue to be improved upon so as to create a total smart campus environment where the visually impaired, hearing impaired, 
and other physically challenged students can blend seamlessly with other students who are not challenged in any way as they will study and move freely about the campus. Acknowledgement and appreciation. My utmost gratitude goes to the Almighty God, Elohim, Jehovah Jireh, El Shaddai, the I am that I am, the living of the body, the most gracious God. I appreciate the contribution and support of my late father, Chief D.A.O. Ojo, Chief D. Chief J.B. Ojo Abiyadu Obutoye, the legacy of the Mesile, the area of the Oke Mesile Kiti, and the first lawyer in the whole of the Jeshalai in the 1960s. A veteran of the Second World War, a navigator in the British Air Force, a foremost leader and high chief, a humanitarian and philanthropist who made sure all his children, male and female, female obtained at least a first degree before leaving home for work or marriage. I'm a good example of his investment in a girl child education. His struggle for justice, equity, and fairness knew no bounds. I thank you, Daddy, for allowing me to inherit this same praise from you. May your soul continue to rest in perfect peace. I salute and appreciate my mother, Princess Veri Nikade Dayo Durowade Obutoye, Ni Adeniron, daughter of Oba Gabriel Oye Adeniron, the other one was the second, the daughter of Otoye Baju Oshu State, who passed on in 1970. Mama was a thoroughly dedicated nurse and matron, popularly called Yabiye in the Jeshan North District of the whole Western Region. I appreciate the kindness of my late stepmother, Honorable Justice Dawson Epela Dona Obutoye OFA. She was the matriarch of the Obutoye family, who made life comfortable and meaningful for me after the demise of my biological mother. In fact, she was the one who encouraged me to study library science, a course she would have studied herself, but for my daddy who persuaded her to study law, like himself, while both of them were studying in the UK. I thank the University of Illinois, in my alpha mater, for giving me the opportunity to practice my profession, both as an academic in the library and in the Department of Library and Information Science, Faculty of Communication and Information Sciences. It is a real privilege for anyone to rise to the peak of to the peak of a profession in practice and in teaching. I greatly appreciate all the vice chancellors who have encouraged me in the course of my career. Le Professor Ade Ade Oyadeni, who employed me, Professor S. Oba Abdurahim, who interviewed me for the position of DUL, Professor S. O. O. Amani who released me on sabbatical to go and serve at the Lagos State University, and Professor Abdugaliyu O. Ambani, who brought me back to the classroom at the University of Illinois to impart knowledge to students. I also thank Professor Abiso Buni and Professor A. L. A. Uzen, both former Vice Chancellor of classroom, for their kind support to me when I was there. How can I thank the current Vice Chancellor enough. Sir, I appreciate the support, kindness, and understanding of Professor Sulatman Age and A calm, considerate, and empath empathic administrator, imbued with wisdom, honor, and integrity. It was during his tenure that I was promoted to the rank of professor. Thank you, sir. I'm greatly, eternally grateful to Professor S. A. Puranga, the Director of Academic Planning in 2014, who called to invite me to the Department of LIS, University of Illinois, after my return from last year. I thank the following professors who positively impacted my life in the course of my career. Professor Y. A. Quadri, Professor M. I. Ajibero, Professor J. S. Adiku, Professor A. A. Issa, Professor L. O. Aino, Professor R. G. Jimon, Professor Akira Nyojo, U. I. and Dr. 
Tadasu, Professor Ede Yaya, Professor Oluwaba Femi, and Professor M.T. Abdurazak, the first dean of law, University of Illinois. I sincerely appreciate the Library and Publications Committee of this great university, particularly the chairman, Professor A.K. Salami, for his support. I immensely thank my doctoral thesis to our supervisor, Professor Mrs. Yabo M. Mabawoku, an icon in the field of library, archival, and information studies, University of Ivanova. She has been a mother, a sister, a mentor, and confident to me over the years. In fact, she provided me with a new academic gown just for this lecture. I give due regard to all my colleagues in the Faculty of Communication and Information Sciences, Faculty of Law, Faculty of Education, the University of Illinois Library, and the Lagos State University. Time and space will not allow me to mention names of individuals. I appreciate the kindness and guidance of the following senior lawyers. Chief Wale Oladi Bebun S.A.N., Malam Yusuf Ali S.A.N., Professor Wahab Begwe Wale S.A.N., thank you very much. My sincere gratitude goes to all my teachers at the School of Library and Information Sciences, University of Pittsburgh. I'm grateful to Professor Patrick Pennant, Professor Sarah Fine, Professor Martha Mahima, Professor William Nasri, all of blessed memory. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I wish to appreciate the kind support of the Otusa Foundation, which gave me scholarship during my master's degree program. The scholarship was only awarded to female African students in SIS, School of Information Sciences, with the highest GPA who was willing to return home to impart knowledge of the younger generation in Africa. I have since fulfilled this condition. <laughs> Mr. Vice Chancellor, permit me at this juncture to introduce my spiritual fathers and mothers who are present here today, Venerable Professor and Mrs. Al W. Omotoye of Mount Olive Anglican Church, Venerable Dr. and Mrs. A. K. Olube Miro of St. Paul's Anglican Church, Baboko, Pastor and Mrs. Z. Kafadano, and other men and women of God present here today who are too numerous to mention. I also want to thank, I thank all the revered royal fathers present here, but all, who are all unavoidably absent. His Royal Majesty, the Oshema Way of Odo Kingdom, the Olushua of Ishua Koko in Akoko land, and the late Owa of Ibajo land, who honored me with the chieftaincy, chieftaincy titles of Yeyezi Mongoli of Odo Kingdom. Yeyezi of Ishua Koko, and the name of the of Ibadjo land, respectively. I appreciate all my siblings from the Obuto clan, ably represented by my big sisters, Barista Funke Abiyodun and Chief Mrs. Adiola Odawodi. And their spouses, Professor Fola Yoli Abiyodun and Chief Adewoko Wale Odawodi, the first bossa of this great university. And the entire Obutoye family, I thank you all for your love, support, and care. My appreciation goes to my other sisters and brothers and their spouses, Mrs. Ade Shola Emos, Mr. Ade Stoji, and Mrs. Pat Obutoye, and Mr. Dimedi and Mrs. Ade Bando Obutoye. I say thank you all for being there for me all the time. I thank all my senior colleagues at the University of Ibadan. I pay special compliments to Professor and Dr. Mrs. Bumiyabile Beleye, Professor M. Tiamili Obakis, Professor Ishola Di Perupe Kanada, Professor Mrs. Morai Asimo retired, Professor Rosalind Oweke of Blessed Memory, Professor O.A. Okulagwe, and Professor K.I.M. Iwano. I thank you all for your assistance in the course of my studentship and career. I acknowledge the support of Mr. C.A.B. Seriki, former university librarian, and my predecessor at Lasso, for his mentorship and friendship. Thank you, sir. I also salute Dr. C.S. Alisu, a Pittsburgh alumnus, 
for a usual walk and kindness. My sincere gratitude go. My sincere gratitude goes to all professional colleagues that have collaborated with his father in his research. Professor M. A. Sere, Dr. Bambo Duwale, Dr. M. Papo Kunde, Professor Uno, A. O. Ubeni, K. L. E. Bwe, A. O. Isa, B. Y. O. G. Tutu, F. A. 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 G. S. O. Utayo. May God bless you all. To my professional colleagues in other universities and other tertiary institutions, Dr. Ari Ebutwabi, Dr. A. O. Unuki, and others too numerous to mention and thank you. I thank all my sisters in law for their love and care. Let Mrs. Ikaroko, let Reverend Mrs. Yabo Shoyeke, Shoyeke, let the ADBC Olufo and Mrs. Adeola George. I remember my mother in law, Mama Nidia Kenge Indu, of blessed memory, who took me as a daughter from the very first day that I joined the family. Special thanks are due to my wonderful children, Adetunji Adeola and Adebola. You have given me so much joy that is unquantifiable. Your successes in life have created a motivating force in me to continue striving to be the my best mother anyone could wish for. To my daughter-in-law, Toby Lola, I love you for being fully integrated into the Nobu family. My grandchildren, Adebu Sola and Adebu Sola, and other grandchildren in the family, you are my joy. I pray all of you will live not only in good health, happiness and fulfillment, and that Grandpa and I will witness your achievements in life. Amen. I wish to thank my darling husband and everyday scholar, Susie Academy. Please, let's keep that. 
Okay. So one fish books. Okay. One fish books. Okay. 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 The top part is the only one we can eat. No, we can eat out of Even this too. Alright. All right. Alright. 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 Alright.